Hey guys, we are back at it today. So this chapter, and I know we did in the first section, and that was important, but it's kind of an add-on to everything else we're doing. In this chapter, what we are doing is we are working it with graphs. And so we're gonna do a whole lot of graphs here. We're gonna do properties of graphs and then actually graph some different things and kind of work back and forth with that. We'll kind of see how that works, but that's the major thing that we're working on here. It's dealing with graphs and understanding what's going on. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about specifically how do we describe a graph to someone? Where is the graph going up? Where's the graph going down? Questions like that, that is gonna be our main focus. So this is again, a very important concept. You'll do it in algebra two, you'll do it in pre-calc, you will do it in calculus if you get to that point as well. So an important concept, make sure we can understand how this works. Here we go, find the Y value. So basically we're saying, what does this mean? All right, so we're telling you what you're going to do. We're gonna say, what does it mean? So if you are finding the y value that pairs with a given x value, it's gonna be something like this, f of some number equals. Like if I tell you to find f of two, just like we did in that last section, the two is my x value. You're gonna go on the graph to where f of two is and tell me the y value. So f of x means tell me the y value that pairs with the x value. The x values that are used on a graph we go from the smallest x value to the largest x value, and we're always going to write it like this. On these, they could be less than or less than or equal to, I'm not really that concerned about that today. But the x values that are used is like we've done before, that is the domain, the x values that are used. The y values that are used on a graph, the smallest to the largest, it's gonna be written like this. Notice that it's y is in between two numbers. Obviously, if that's domain, this one is the range. Range means y's. Tell where the graph is above the x-axis. Okay, so think about numbers that are above the x-axis. Here's the x-axis. What is going to be true about all the y values? The y values are going to be positive. Okay, above the x-axis means the y values are positive, or we're going to say f of x is positive. It could also be f of x, yeah, that's not an f, f of x is greater than zero. Same thing, greater than zero means positive. It's always gonna be written like this, where x is between here and here, and we'll explain that here in a minute. And then where is it below? Well, if that was f of x is positive, we want f of x is negative if it's below the line. We could also write that as f of x is less than zero. That's our main idea. If you need to come back and look at that, please do, but I'll try to explain it as we go. Here's a table. This graph, or a graph, sorry. This is a graph. We're going to say this is f of x. If I want to find f of 3, that means I'm going to where my x value is 3. Right here, my x value is 3. What's my y value? It is 2. So my answer is 2. f of negative 8. If I'm going to negative 8, here's negative 8 on my graph, looking at the y value. The y value is 6. Done. f of 0. I'm going to where my x value is 0. The y value is 2. That's it. Don't let those be harder than that. It's just a matter of looking at my graph. Is f of negative 4 positive or negative? Well, go to where your x is negative 4. What is my y value? Oh, it's 2. It's above the x-axis. It's positive. Done. f of 7. Here's f of 7 below the x-axis. It's negative. That's it. Don't let those be harder than they, what they are. It's just finding the y values that go with the x values. All right, so keep that in mind. Next thing, we are answering the question, what is the domain of f of x? So remember, domain means the x values. So when I do this type of problem, I like to think, where do I start this graph? Well, right here on the x-axis, this right here is the first time I touch my graph right there at negative eight. And if I were to move that line, so think of me, I wish I had a better way of drawing this, but think of me drawing lines. And if I kept moving it over and over and over, when would I draw my last vertical line that touches my graph? It would be right here. That's the last value I use on my graph. And so where is my graph? Well, my X value goes from negative eight all the way until 10. So in other words, X is sandwiched in between. What X's do I use? It's in between negative eight and 10. 
Since I actually have a dot at negative 8, I'm going to underline that because I'm using negative 8. It's equal to negative 8 somewhere on my graph. And it's also equal to 10 somewhere on my graph because I'm touching it there. So that's why I can underline those values. But basically, when we talk about domain, it's the left side of my graph to the right side of my graph. The smaller number always goes first. What about the range? Well, range means Y values. So we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to go from the bottom to the top. So where, if I drew a horizontal line, where is the first time I would touch my graph? It's right there. Range means y, so my range, my y value is negative 6, is less than. y is less than. Where's the last value I use? So if I drew horizontal lines and I kept going up and up and up, when is the last time I would draw a horizontal line? It is right there at a y value of 6. Did I actually have a y value of negative 6? Yes. So I'm going to include it. I am equal to negative 6. And there is some place where I'm actually equal to 6. So I'm going to underline that as well. So again, what that's drawing here between the domain and range, it's like I drew a box around where my graph is going to fall. Everything in, lives in between an x value of negative 8 and 10 and a y value of negative 6 and 6. It helps just kind of focus in your picture, domain and range. Let's do the next one. Where is f of x positive? So where is my graph? above the x-axis. So if we're saying positive, I am looking from here above. When is my graph above the x-axis? And so when we do these types of questions, I always like to start on the left-hand side of my graph. Imagine I had a ball on this graph and it started right there at negative 8. At negative 8, I am positive. And then this is where, when we're talking about where, we're only talking about x values. So at negative 8, I'm positive. Right here at negative 7, I'm positive. Still positive. Still positive. Still positive. Still positive. Still positive. Still positive. Still, 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 all the way until right there. All of those y values, all the way up until right there, I am positive because I'm above the x-axis. And so what value did I stop at? I stopped at 4 the x value of 4. So from negative 8 all the way until 4, I was above the x-axis. And now this is where it gets a little bit funky. At negative 8, am I actually positive? Is, the, is 6 a positive number? Yeah, 6 is a positive number. So since it's actually positive, I'm going to underline. It is less than or equal to negative 8 because at negative 8, I'm actually positive. At 4, I have the y value of 0. Is zero positive? No, zero is nothing. Zero is not considered positive or negative. That is why I do not underline it because it is not a true statement that it, at four I'm positive because four I'm nothing. All right, where is f of x negative? So again, it's a where question. So anytime you see a where question, you see a where question in math class, you're asking for the x value. So x is going to be sandwiched between two numbers. When is that less than zero? When is it negative? So when am I below the x-axis? All right, well, I changed gears right here. At, starting at that dot, starting at four, I started being below the line because I was less than zero there. From four, I'm below the line. Below, 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 all the way until 10. So from four to 10, my y value is negative at four my y value is zero so it's not positive or negative i do not underline it same thing at 10 it's zero i'm not negative anymore so i don't underline it that is why i have four is less than x is less than 10. okay that's the main idea let's practice it again find f of zero so i've got a new graph this is my new f of x graph I want to know when f of x is 0. So I'm looking for where my x value is 0. Oh, okay. My x value is 0 at negative 1. When is f of, find f of 6. So that's my x value is 6. My y value is negative 4. f of negative 5. So I'm going to my negative 5. My y value is negative 7. Those are easy. f of negative 10 right here. Is it positive or negative? It's negative because it's negative 3 f of 8, if I'm doing f of 8, I'm going to where my y value is 8. Ooh, oh no, I don't have 8 on my graph. Well, here's 9, here's 6. 8's right here. 
if I put a dot there, I can't tell exactly what the y value is, but is it above or below the x-axis? It's below, so it's negative. Domain are the x values. So the x values, I'm going from the left to the right. What's the smallest x value I use? Negative 10. What's the biggest x value I use? Well, the biggest x value I use is 9. Everything I want on this graph is sandwiched between that line and that line. That's my domain, left to right. When we do range, range are the y values. So I'm going to sandwich my y values here. What's the lowest y value? Well, if I drew a horizontal line right there, there's nothing below it. So the lowest y value that I use here is negative 7. Then I'm going to go to the top line. Where's the highest y value I use? Well, the highest y value I use is right there at negative 1. For each of these, for my domain and my range, I am actually have a dot at negative 10. I have a dot at 9, so I'm using those x values. I'm using negative 7. I'm touching negative 7, so we're going to underline it. I'm touching negative 1, so I'm going to underline it. Again, I'm drawing a box around where all of my information falls. All right, last one, where's f of x positive? So f of x positive means when am I above the x-axis? The good news, when is f of x positive? The answer to that question is nope. I'm never above the x-axis, so I'm not going to do it. Where is f of x negative? Well, my where, it's an x question. When am I negative? Well, I start being negative at negative 10, and then I'm negative, I'm negative, I'm negative, 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 all this time. I'm below the x-axis, below the x-axis, below the x-axis, all the way until the end, negative 10 to 9. When my x value is negative 10, am I actually below the x-axis? Am I negative? Yes, I'm below the x-axis. At 9, am I actually below the x-axis? Am I negative? Yes, so I'm going to underline it. All right, one more, and I'm going to go fast here. If you thought I was going fast on the last one, I'm going faster here. Not super exciting to talk through. You might need to see some examples, but I think they're kind of the same. So this is f of x. At negative 5, my y value is 2. At 8, my y value is negative 8. At 4, my y value is 1. Domain, my x value is going to be between negative 10 and positive 8. Both of them, I actually used it, so I underline it. Range means y. We're going from the bottom to the top. What's the lowest y value I use? Right there. My y value is negative 8. That's a less than sign, I swear. Uh, what's the biggest y value that I use? Right there. My y value is 4. I actually use negative 8. I actually used 4, so I'm going to underline. Is f of 6 positive? Yep. At 6, my y value is 3. It's positive. F of negative 2, well, negative 2 would be right there. Yeah, F of negative 2 is also positive because I'm above the x-axis. All right, so we've done all of that. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Last question, where's F of x, where's the graph positive? Well, if I started right here, I like to do both of them at the same time. Starting at negative 10, am I positive or negative? Well, I'm negative because I'm below the x-axis. So I'm going to start off here. Negative 10 is less than x is less than something. At negative 10, am I actually negative? Yes, so I'm going to underline it. Remember, negative or positive is, are you above or below this x-axis? So from negative 10 until when do I stop being negative? I'm negative, I'm negative, and then I stop being negative at negative 8. So from negative 10 to negative 8, I'm below the x-axis. But at negative 8, I'm not actually below it. I'm on it. That's why I'm not going to underline it. And then at that point, I start being positive because I start being above the x-axis. So starting at negative 8, and I'm not going to underline it because it's not actually positive. Starting at negative 8, I'm positive. I'm positive. I'm positive. 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 Still above the x-axis. Still above it. Still above it. All the way until 7. From negative 8 until 7, I am positive. And then at 7, not underlining it because it's not equal to, it's not actually positive. It's, it is 0. From negative 8 to 7, I'm positive. And then starting at 7, I go back below. So from 7 all the way to 8, 
I am negative again because I'm below the x-axis. One of those two numbers, 7 or 8, needs to be underlined. Which one do you think needs to be underlined? The 8 needs to be underlined because it's actually negative. It's below the line. That is properties of graphs. We're going to do a second video with very similar concepts. None of them are hard. You just got to figure them out. Hope you did.